Okay, so right now I'm recording, and what I'll do is, you're gonna see that I have a YouTube channel where all of the lessons and all that good stuff goes, and I'll just put it right on the, uh, the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Yeah, anything that you guys find helpful, that you find that I haven't done or you wanted or, you know, it would make life easier, just blast me an email. I have no problem putting up extra stuff. I have a quick question. Are we going to be using Brightspace? No, not at all. All right. And the reason is that this course is shared with the entire world. I follow the MIT open coursework kind of philosophy. So my stuff is used by University of Kentucky, University of Missouri. I got all kinds of people. And if I lock it down in Brightspace, then if you're not enrolled in the class, you can't see it. Okay, and the other problem that I have is, let's say that you guys get an A, you're like rock star students, and then you don't pick this stuff up for three years, you get to capstone and you go, how do I draw a line? Okay, you can't get back to the material. Whereas the way I do it, you know, it's free to everybody. And you can go right back to the website link. You can watch all the videos again, whatever refreshers you need, it's all right there. So that's why I use the format that I use. That's a good approach. Well, it, it's been working nicely. Um, I find that people all over the world are looking at the course. So, so will there be people in the Zoom call that aren't from UMaine? No. No, I've only included you Mainers because you guys are paying for it. You are the market that deserves my attention. Nobody else. Now, that said, if another prof from another university sends me an email with a question, absolutely, I'll answer it, but not on your time. That's the philosophy behind the open source. The problem that it's solved once shouldn't be solved again. It's a waste of resources. I'm sorry, say again, Emmanuel? It's, it's, it's a, uh, the philosophy behind the open source. Uh, I'm saying that a problem or something that has been ditched, uh, taught once uh, should be uh, we shouldn't waste resources to, to do it again. So it's good that you have it open. Oh, you. I totally agree with you. And a lot of it came out of my first couple of years teaching this class. You know, I would find that students would come in early in the morning. They didn't have enough coffee. They didn't see what I was trying to do or they just missed it. And they needed to see it a second time. So by videoing everything, then they can go back to their dorm room, get their second cup of coffee, watch the important material again. Oh, I've got it. And it's really worked out much, much nicer. Yeah. Okay, guys, so 801, we are officially game on for MEE 120. So let me give you the typical introduction. Hi, my name is Steve Abadessa. I'll be your instructor for the next 16 weeks in MEE 120. If you're here for Sociology 101, run. Uh, this ain't it, okay? Uh, my personal story, I am not a professor. I am a teaching staff member. I was out in the world for 20 years actually doing engineering, okay? I had no intention of ever being a professor, okay? But somehow the 2008 recession happened and I needed a job. And I always saw these junior engineers that I would get and they couldn't make a blueprint to save their butts. So when the opportunity to come back to the university and teach students and actually show them how to do it right came along, I jumped on it. So if you guys want to know the stuff I've worked on, I've worked on the Raptor, I've worked on the F-15, F-16, I've done medical stuff, um, I've done clinical diagnostic equipment, 
I've done printing presses, hearing aids, you name it, I've worked on it. I've probably been with 10 different companies. And a lot of what you're going to hear from me in this class is the design philosophies that came out of DuPont Medical Products. Everywhere I've been, that philosophy has worked the best from a business standpoint. Okay, and in a lot of courses, you're gonna hear a lot of number crunching and a lot of stuff like that. And that's great, that's wonderful. Yeah, Allege. Allege, you gotta unmute Sorry. yourself. Sorry, I forgot, okay. um, it's Ali. Um, okay. But what is the DuPont medical, thing? What, what is that? That was just a company that I worked at and they had some very good design philosophies, okay? So let's start off with where's all the information for this class, okay? I, in the chat, I put the link to the class website. This is your class website. This is where everything's gonna come from. So we'll go through just the basic. All of your lessons, they're all right here. These are all just links to a Google Drive. So if you click on it, lesson one, here's the slideshow for lesson one. And we can go right down through that. Okay, if we go back to, let's see. So if we go back to the website, your syllabus is right here under the syllabus tab. Here's my name. I'm located in Crosby Hall. Uh, office hours. I haven't decided how office hours are gonna work, guys. So my plan was I want you to read ahead. I want you to do the homework, come in with questions, and I want the lectures to be far more of doing examples, getting you up to speed, answering questions. Okay, that said, if we find out that, you know, you guys need more time or you just have too many questions, sometimes it happens, then I will set up additional extra office hours and it'll be just an open meeting. You guys can log in, answer your, ask your questions, share your screen, whatever works, okay? So here are all the Zoom meeting links for both sections of my class. So you just click on the link. The passwords are all MEE120, all capitals. So just use the appropriate link. Here is all of your homeworks and the due dates. There you go. So I like to give a week for homework. I find that if I just say it's due the next Monday at 8 a.m., great. I'm not gonna accept late work. That snowballed into an absolute mess last year. So get it to me on time or you know, send me an email, ask questions, whatever you gotta do. Regrading, I had a student ask me last year if they could keep submitting homework until they got the grade they wanted. Okay, not gonna happen. I view it like this. Imagine that I asked Corvette to make me a sports car and they throw together the crappiest sports car they can possibly build and they give it to me. And I say, this is garbage and I bring it back to the dealer. And I say, and then they say to me, okay, keep bringing back the sports car until it's good enough that we get the review that we want. Well, the first thing I do is I say, keep it, give me my money back. And I go out and I buy a Lamborghini, not on a professor's salary, but you know, that's what I would do. And then the person that built me the crappy Corvette loses their job, the company goes under. So don't do that. So one grading, just do it right. The homeworks are not hard, guys. And I will set you up with as much help as you possibly need. Okay, so no regrading. Uh, the textbook, totally optional. The only reason that it's on my syllabus is because the faculty made me put it there. 
I never even open it. I mean, the students in past years have told me that the slides under the lessons are everything that you need to know. Hardware, you guys got to have a Windows computer with a three button mouse. Okay. Hopefully I have spammed you to death all summer with emails about get the right computer and you guys have the right machine now. Uh, we're going to be using SolidWorks 2020. So make sure you have 2020. If you took the course before or you know, maybe you're working at the composite center, you got a different edition, make sure you upgrade to 2020. I had a student last year that got to the first exam and they said, oh, I have 2017 and they couldn't open the exam. So then I was forced to create a whole custom exam just for them. Okay, not doing that this year. I'm warning you up front, if you can't open the exam because you got the wrong edition of SolidWorks, I give you a zero. It's just that simple. So no custom exams. Uh, required drawing tools. We will do hand drawing of isometrics somehow, some way. So having a pencil, eraser, and a ruler would be good. Okay, course objective. Guys, I want to stress one thing. Okay, this is not not, not a button clicking course, okay? This course is all about how to get the ideas that are in my head into your heads, okay? So when you develop the cure for cancer and you've got this cool nano machine that's gotta be made in the billions, okay? You've gotta get that idea out of your head and into the manufacturing engineer's head who's actually gonna produce it. Okay, that's what's important. I don't give a damn that you know every slick mouse trick or every slick way to rotate the screen. Not important. This is about communicating ideas. Okay, so if you go off and you go to work at Pratt & Whitney, where I was, and you've got to run Siemens NX, I want the information in this course to be just as relevant for NX as it is for SolidWorks. Now, that said, I will give you everything you need to know for the SolidWorks certification exam. And my past, <coughs> excuse me, my past students have had no problem with the certification exam. So you will get plenty of depth for everything you need to do. Uh, course outcomes, yeah, you're gonna learn to run SolidWorks and do it well. Uh, final project, I'm going to hold off on that one for just a minute. So grading, the way it works is test one. That's going to be, I give you a blueprint, you give me back a really high-end, nice, solid model. Test two, I'm going to give you an assembly. You're going to give me back really well-done blueprints and a really good assembly package. Your homework is going to be 20%. Your project, which will be the Sterling engine, that'll be 20%, and your final will be 20%. Okay, if we get to the end and, you know, the world is all screwed up because of COVID, we may not have a final. And I leave that open to the students to vote on. So if you guys decide that you absolutely are just dying to have another exam at the end of the year, okay, we'll have one. But typically I find that if we do the first four, test one, two, the homework and the project, your grade is pretty much set. I find that it's very uniform from year to year. So, you know, this one, this is the current plan, but we may change it. Okay, so here's my number to letter conversion. Pretty much run of the mill, same as every other class. Okay, cheating guys. Every year, somebody gets behind and they go to one of the CAD download sites like uh, FreeCAD or one of those and they go and they download their final project. And I do check, I go to those sites too, I know all of them. 
And then I fail them summarily right at the end after they've done a lot of work. Guys, don't do that. There is nothing worse than a student who's worked all semester only to get an F right at the end, okay? So just don't cheat, do your own work. You know, this course is not super hard. This is not like physics or calculus. So, you know, let's not go there. Academic honesty, you know, usual story, do your own work. Uh, if you got a disability, let me know. I'll accommodate whatever you need. If you find you're being sexually harassed or whatever, talk to me. I'll make it. I'll make something different happen. Uh, course schedule. It's all under the lessons. Uh, COVID-19, guys. The year is going to be weird, so we're just going to roll with it. Make sure you wash your hands. Wear your mask. I'm not gonna wear a mask in class only because if a virus can get through 100 miles of fiber optic cable, okay, you got me, I admit it. So there's your syllabus, pretty run of the mill, plain Jane stuff. So a final project, we'll click on the final projects tab. This is what I'm gonna have you build. Okay, this is a lot like a steam engine. There's a little candle underneath, there's some ice on the top, and this is called a Stirling engine. So it works by expanding and contracting air, and this balloon on the side acts as a power piston. So what you're gonna do is over the course of the semester, you're gonna model every single one of these parts you're gonna build it up into an assembly and then you're gonna do a really nice design package where you show me where everything goes, how to assemble it, what parts go into it, where to buy all the parts, all that good jazz, okay? You're gonna get a baggie of parts. Now you can design any Stirling engine you want I don't care, you have freedom in this. You know, there are plenty out on YouTube. Um, I've got books in the fishbowl. You're welcome to stop by and look at. But you're gonna have a basic baggie of parts containing this stuff, okay? And you can use it however you see fit. In past years, I've dedicated the last uh, lecture to everybody coming over and running their engines. Well, okay, we're in the world of COVID. That's probably not gonna happen. So we may have to do that virtually. Maybe you guys can video your engines running or something like that. In the first homework, I need you to tell me whether you can get to Crosby Hall. So that simply means when the time comes, can you come get your baggie of goodies? Is it possible for you to ship it out? Um, Cause I'm in a different state. Yeah, and I know I've got one person that's in Delaware. So- yeah, I'm in California. Damn, you are a long distance commuter. Uh, yes, to a point, okay. So that's why I'm asking, where are you guys? If I find that I've only got to ship like five or eight packages, something like that, yeah, I can do that. If I find I've got to ship out 50, okay, that's more of a problem. And we may have to bag the final project. So please tell me where you are and whether you can access Crosby Hall uh, in your first uh, homework submission. What? <clears throat> do you want that in email or something or no? Yes, so let's okay. go over how you're gonna submit your homework. Let's see, we'll get rid of this. So the way I do it is um, I have a separate email account that the graders can access. So you're gonna take all of your homework files and you're gonna email it to, it's under the syllabus, mee120 section three at gmail.com. Okay. If you have general course questions like, you know, 
how do I create a chamfer feature? Okay, send that to my normal email, my main.edu, the one that's been spamming you for the last couple months. If you're submitting your homework, send it to this one, MEE120 section three at Gmail. Don't worry about the section three. Okay, that is just uh, something that Gmail made me create. There's actually only one section and the graders can, can deal with it. Okay. Also, quick question. Shoot, Gage. How will I be able to get the uh, course onto my Brightspace? Because currently I only have ME101 on there. Okay, we're not using Brightspace at all. All right, I was just trying to figure out where you were keeping your syllabus. I was looking for it on the, is that on the, the actual like UMA website? Yep. Okay. So if you just uh, go to my, my mechanical engineering MEE 120, which is pasted in the chat. So then just bookmark that and then you'll be able to access this page and everything you need. All right, thank you. I know that you had mentioned the SOLIDWORKS certification. Is that a requirement for the course or is that an additional um, certification that we can get like outside of the course? Nope, that is outside the course. And typically we have that in like, I think Eric Martin uh, coordinates that. He's really big into that. Uh, I think he does it in like October sometime. Is it required though, like to pass the course? No, not at all. In fact, I haven't even taken it. Okay. It, you know, it's nice to have on a resume, but to me, I view it as like, gee, I'm certified in screwdrivers. Uh, so what? It's just a tool. You know, I could just as easily go get my NX certification. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Pretty much when I was a senior engineer and I would get a junior engineer coming in out of college, we all assume that you guys can play with CAD. Okay, you may not know how to use it well, but you guys can all use CAD by the time you get out of college. So a solid work certification, eh. Plus the other thing is once you get out in the real world, one of the things you learn is that we all had contractors doing CAD. If you're just sitting there drawing parts 40 hours a week, okay, then your company is wasting your skills as an engineer. Okay, you should be designing stuff, you should be solving problems. If you're sitting there making blueprints 40 hours a week, no, I can get somebody for 20 bucks an hour to do that. You guys are gonna cost me like $120 an hour fully billed out out in the industrial world. So while you may do some CAD, it is not the meaning of your world, not as an engineer. Okay, so let's see, that little diatribe aside, uh, folks have had Typically, uh, the most trouble with making blueprints. So I put blueprint examples here. And in red, I put all of the stuff that people typically get wrong. So when we get to the second half of the class, just go down through all the red stuff before you submit your, uh, before you submit your homework. Make sure you're not gonna get gigged on any of the rules in red, okay? And you'll see uh, typical machined part, sheet metal, assemblies and how you do, uh, telling people how to put an assembly together and what goes in it, and another assembly print. Okay, let's go back to, yeah, did somebody what have a question? What is an assembly print? Okay, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna draw a whole bunch of piece parts. Okay, so we'll draw a nut, a bolt. Then what we have to do is we're gonna put them together. We're gonna to create an assembly file where we link those two parts together. And that's gonna be an assembly. Then whenever we go and we modify the components 
it will be reflected in every assembly we ever create. So for example, let's say I use a bolt in a Corvette. If I go back in and I modify the bolt, maybe I put some head stampings on it, something like that. That will then show up in every single instance all across the Corvette and it will show up with the new head stampings. Okay, so that's what an assembly is gonna be. We will get lots and lots of experience with that. I actually have a lesson where you guys get to build a Chevy V8. So I give you all the piece parts and you've got to put it together. Then at the end of the lesson, you get to rotate the crankshaft and see the pistons move and all kinds of good stuff. It's a, it's a nice lesson for how to do assemblies. I have a question. Shoot. Um, are we going to be handling any kind of rev controls with drawings um, in this course? I'm going to show you the absolute basics of rev control. Okay. So yes, if you notice on this screen, you'll see a rev block right here. Yeah. I'm going to give you a lecture on the typical way that that's handled. Okay. Everybody does it differently, mm -hmm. but I'll give you one solid typical way to do it. Okay, great. What is a rev control? Okay, so revisioning, let's say you go out and you go to work for Polaris and you have to design a carburetor for a snowmobile and a new model comes out and you want to use the same carburetor on the new model, but you know, maybe you need some kind of a hole put in the carburetor for some new cool feature. So you've got to control your design all through the manufacturing process. What you're going to do is you're going to revise the model and then you have to account for the change. You have to get it signed off and you have to say what changed throughout the entire system. And that's revision control. It's just controlling what the current part being made is. So the last thing you want to do is go willy nilly changing things. And then the shop floor says, oh, I have two prints. Is the one with a hole the one I should make or the one without the hole I should make? And that's how, that's why we do revision control. Okay, so print examples, let's see. So lesson one, we'll go down through the slides. Pretty much covered that. Uh, office hours, I had toyed with the idea of having students in for office hours. Uh, that's not gonna work. I have an immune suppressed 87 year old at home, so I can't do that. Let's see, course is all about conveying information. We've already done that. Laptop. Uh, guys, do not try to use a trackpad with SolidWorks. It just hurts. If any of you guys are running a Mac, make sure you get Windows running on a parallel. Okay, here's the book, uh, SolidWorks 2020 by Randy Shi. It's an okay book. I just find that it's more about clicking the buttons than the activities of an actual engineer. So if you want it, buy it. Past students have said, eh, not so useful. Okay, grading, just a rehash of the syllabus. Uh, I've probably killed you guys with the SolidWorks instructions. Okay, there is the email address for submitting your homework. Do not send your homework to my main.edu. Okay, only because the graders can't see it. That's where all my work email goes. By all means, if you wanna send questions to my main.edu, fine, all good. Okay, in this course, we're gonna do parametric modeling. That means everything is number driven. So you're gonna do a sketch, you're gonna dimension the sketch, and it's gonna be fully constrained, that is the standard. 
One of the things I'm really fussy about, do not cut extrude circles to make holes. Okay, do not, do not, do not do it. And the reason is you get bad call outs on the blueprints. I am gonna make you guys a video that you can watch and I'm gonna show you all the things that make me crazy with new CAD jockeys. So hopefully you never do it and I'm gonna show you what not to do and why it blows up later. Measurement wise, are we using metrics? Uh, this year I'm gonna make it a mix. So primarily we're gonna use inch pound seconds because still that's what most American companies are using. Now I'll be the first to tell you the metric system is much better. Okay, it, it's so much more convenient and you don't have to worry about that silly G sub C. Uh, but yes, we will do both this year and I will make sure you know how to do both. Okay, final project, we already went over all of this. The one thing I do not wanna see you guys do for the final project is something called a lamina engine. And you can type that into YouTube and look at a couple of lamina engines. It's just, it's trivial, there's not enough parts in it. Okay, and it only runs at one resonance speed and they're just lousy. So find a design with a displacer or come check the books in Crosby Hall. Okay, here is a lamina engine as an example. Do not, do not, do not make that. Uh, I am gonna make you do a final project plan. It's called a Gantt chart. So what you're gonna to have to do is tell me when everything's gonna get done. We're gonna do just a simple, simple Excel spreadsheet. And you're gonna tell me, I'll have all my models done by this date. I'll have my model prints done by this date. I'll have my assembly prints done by this date. And then I'm gonna have a meeting with each of you around Thanksgiving. And I'm gonna say, okay, put your plan on the screen and show me this, show me that, show me something else and you'll get graded on how well you've stayed on your plan. Okay, the reason we do that is the first year I taught this class, I had a whole bunch of people come in looking like the living dead the day before the project was due and the project looked like garbage. So let's not do that. Let's just keep going along nice and smooth. Nobody gets beat up at the end, staying up all night. Okay, glass box concept. That's pretty much it for, you know, here's the course, here's how we're gonna do it. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. You guys are good, you're, you're hanging with me so far. I actually okay. got a question. Shoot. Um, in terms of if we have a doctor's appointment or something and we can't make the 8 a.m. time, should we email you or is it just our responsibility to watch the recording of the lecture or? It's just your responsibility. Yeah, so my assumption is that at some point you're gonna have a bad internet connection or something like that. It's my responsibility to make sure that all of the material is available online and that there are example videos out there. And if-, you, if Awesome. Go, Go ahead. I was going to say, where will the recordings for these lectures be posted? Uh, the videos? The recordings of the lectures, yeah, for us to access. Okay, so the way I do that, if you look on your screen, actually, let me just keep going and you're going to see one. Perfect. Okay. I have a quick question about the, uh, the final project. Yep. Final project question. I hope he didn't fall over backward. <laughs> I also have a question about the final project. So are we basically building a water based like windmill? Like nope. what is a, what is that thing that you were talking about? Okay, so a Stirling engine is a hot air engine. It's a lot like a steam engine. 
except there's no phase change. So in the main body of that engine, there's a fixed volume of air and there's something called the displacer that pushes the air from one side to the other. So it goes hot, cold, hot, cold. That cyclical heating and contraction causes the power piston to go up and down and drives the engine. Okay, okay. it's kind of a unique technology. Um, it held the world record for solar energy conversion efficiency for like decades. The industrial ones of these, uh, they run a working fluid of like 3000 PSI helium and they're really, really efficient. So that's why it's kind of a cool tech to introduce to you guys early on. So my question was, I know we're gonna be getting like a package of um, things to build it out of, but if you have a home forge, can you use that to like melt down some metal and do a little um, part building with that? You are welcome to. Okay, let me be very clear about this. Okay, the final project is all about CAD. This is a CAD class. Okay, what I wanna see is a really nice documentation package submitted at the end. I don't care if your engine runs or not. I think it would be great if it did. You know, I think having a success early on in your academic career is a great ego boost. It feels good. I had a student last year, she danced all around the room when she finally got her engine to run. Uh, I wish I had a video of that. It was quite amusing to watch. Okay. I would say, don't make this overly complicated. That's why we do tin can Stirling engines so that you can simply cut the metal with, t with common scissors. Uh, I generally leave some tools out in, in the fishbowl here in Crosby. Okay, don't get crazy. The years that I've had students do things like forgings and big metal and all that, they find number one, it takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of time. You guys need to be studying, okay? Not spending hundreds of hours to make a Sterling engine. There's not enough reward in it for you. Okay. As far as tools, what are like basic tools that we will need in order to make that engine thing? Nothing more than a pair of scissors and maybe a common straight pin, which I include in the kit. The whole thing is held so, together with double-sided tape. Um, it's really minimal on the tools. So we shouldn't need to like solder anything or anything like no, that? No, 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 no. Uh, so I'm still having a hard time finding your class on the UMAN website. Okay. Uh, go to the Zoom chat window. Okay. Can you see that down at the bottom? Just a second, yeah, I'm clicking there right now. Okay. Thank you. So you should be able to copy that and paste that line into a browser. Oh, I was just able to click it and it popped up for me. Okay, cool. Uh, I had a quick question. I don't wanna hold it up anymore, but. No, no, we have plenty of time. Go ahead and ask your question. Uh, I've been messing around and like designing with Fusion 360 in yep. the past couple of years, do you think that'll transfer at all to SolidWorks? The general idea is absolutely. Almost every CAD system is some version of sketch and extrude, sketch and revolve. Those ideas will all transfer directly. Awesome. Yeah, Fusion's pretty cool. That's what I use for my, uh, for my machining work. Yeah, I've used SolidWorks and AutoCAD a little bit, but Fusion's just really, it looks a lot better and it's a lot easier, I think. Eh, well, I think NX is easier than all of them, but you know, it's what you're used to. Yeah, I find free cut easy. <laughs> yeah, you ask 10 designers, you get 10 different answers on that one. You should see the pro engineer guys that run Creo. They say that their stuff is the greatest thing in the world. So yeah, well, whatever guys. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, so any other questions about class stuff? Um, I know that you were mentioning the fishbowl. Um, what kind of resources can we look for if we don't have access to the on-campus options? Like, is there anything you'd recommend like looking into? You should be able to find anything you need just by doing a Google search on Sterling Engine. And specifically, I would Google uh, Coke can Sterling Engine. <laughs> There are just gobs of information out there. And again, just remember, this is all about CAD. So the things that are important, you need to learn how to make a model. You'll be able to articulate the thing around and watch it move. You know, make sure the displacer doesn't plow through the bottom of the engine. So the other reason that I like to do a build part of the course is I get a lot of engineers that come in first year and they say, oh, I've got to go build this thing so that then I know what to draw. No, wrong answer, guys. Okay, that's like saying, I work at Ferrari, so I'm going to go over to the metal rack, grab a piece of steel, hammer it into a rear view mirror so I can go draw the thing. No, it doesn't work that way. We plan first, then we build. And this should drive that home. Okay, other questions? All right, so let's roll on with just the basic stuff of, here's how you read a blueprint, because that's the way the first part of the class is gonna run, okay? I'm gonna give you a picture, you give me back a solid model. So here's the basic idea. So the idea of a blueprint is that we have an object. And in this case, it's this little wedge. And we put it inside of a glass box. And we take the edges and we project the edges up onto the glass. So we'll project this top slopey face, We'll project it up to the top. Can you guys all see my mouse pointer when I? Okay, I've got two different answers. I've got a no. Yeah. And I've got a yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, currently it's in like a little four-way arrow right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll try to make the pointer bigger for the next class. So what we do is we project this edge up. And then any of the edges that are inside, like this hole, we project that onto the top, but we put it as a dotted line. And that's the dotted lines that you see here and here. Okay. So imagine that there were a folding line that goes right between these two views. The top view is what's going to go on the top glass. The front view is what's on the front, front glass. Okay, so that's how we represent a 3D object in the 2D world. Okay, so again, no fold lines, and then we dimension this thing. Okay, you only need as many views as will fully describe the object. So for example, I could project a view over here and I could get a left side view. I don't need it, there's no information. Everything I need to make this object is summarized by these two views. So I could give you this print, you could go off and draw it for me. So let's actually see, and uh, there was a question before about how do you get to the videos? Well, this is how you get to the videos. I've actually embedded them right in the presentation. We can't There's hear. no sound. You have to share your sound. You guys can't hear that? No. So when you go to share the screen, you have to also share the sound separately. Okay. Good to know. Uh, let's see. 
So usually if you just end the screen share and then you can go back and start it again, it, it'll okay. ask if you want to include the sound on the bottom. So let's see. So let's see. Any better? You guys have sound now? Kate, I'm seeing a shaking head no, or is that exhaustion? You're not projecting your screen. Okay. I'm mostly worried about the audio right now. I haven't heard a thing. Okay. I hear you talking, but I can't hear the video. Uh, stereo. All right, guys. We could just go onto your website and watch the video. Absolutely. Is that the homework? Watch the video. That will be the homework. All right. I have step-by-step -step instructions if it helps. It says, click the share screen button in the toolbar. Check okay. the box to share computer sound at the bottom of the share screen pop-up window. And then make sure the volume is turned up. Okay. And then make sure the screen is visible to participants. Okay, so let's try that again. So I've got the audio settings open. And the, what was the first step again? So the first step is click the share screen button at the, in the toolbar. The second step is to click the box to share the sound. Click the, the third box. step, okay. it's like a little check box at the bottom. It should be in the pop-up window when you go to share your screen. Uh... Let's I can send you the, the picture if that helps. Here. All right. So that's going to be my home. That'll be my homework assignment to get that squared away. All right. However, if you want to see that, so obviously I embed all of the videos. Uh, in the lectures where they're appropriate. What you can do, if you come back to the website, if you go under videos, here's a summary of all the videos, if you just want to see those. And there's extra stuff here that I don't go over in class. So we're going to go over all the piece part modeling, uh, all of the assembly stuff, Photo rendering, this will be at the end if we get to it. Uh, lofting and reading airfoils. This analytical stuff, this is not part of the class, but I put it in there because other universities use it and some of your later classes might use this. Oh, we're not using the attention and stuff? No, we will not do this as part of the graded class. That's upsetting. Well, there's only so much stuff I can stuff into the class. True. And then making real parts. So this one's 3D printing. Uh, this one is using, well, this is multi-part printing. And this one is actually using SolidWorks and Fusion 360 to do toolpath creation for CNC milling. And you know, feel free to watch these. Okay, uh, and I'm going to have to create a thumbnail for the glass box. So that will also be my, my homework. Are we going to be doing any like CAM, CNC stuff? No. Okay. Uh, Professor Coda does that in your manufacturing course, if you decide to take that. Yeah, there's Are we just... doing? Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, are we doing any 3D printing? Um, not directly as part of the course. If you wanted to do something 
for your engine, maybe you want to print some lever arms or something like that, you're welcome to, but I'm not specifically going to cover it. Oh. Okay, so you guys have survived your first lesson. Your homework is to go off, get SolidWorks running, blast me an email if you have trouble, and tomorrow when we do our next lecture, we'll actually jump into SolidWorks and I'll expect you to have it going. And we'll go through the super basic stuff of manipulating the screen, doing sketches, that kind of thing. I'm going to play around with, a little, with, it, with it a little bit tonight. Good plan. Okay. Any questions before we sign off in our last two minutes? Yeah, I actually had a question. So I don't have, um, I, I missed the memo and I have a Mac. I have to run uh, SolidWorks on Crossover, uh, which is doable. But okay. um, what's the best place to go purchase and download it just on their website? I don't know. Uh, okay. I'm not a Mac user, and I always send all of the Mac questions over to IT. Okay. You need a Windows disk, and you also need the Parallelis. They're two separate applications. You download the Parallelis, and when you're setting that up, it'll ask you for the Windows code. Um, the older versions ask you for a disk, but now they don't even need the disk. Um, but it's good to have it. And then you do that, and you partition your drive, and it takes, like, a few, like six or seven hours to do and then you, you're all set and then when you boot up you have to press a, a keyboard shortcut to uh to swap over yeah in theory i can avoid all of that just by running an application that it's um it's an application that is built to run windows applications on mac um i know i know people that have used it for past courses yeah, a boot. Uh, if you do with boot camp, um, it, may, it partitions your operating system into two operating systems. If you use parallels, it's an application. So you don't have to reboot to like switch between Windows and Mac. You can have Windows and Mac open at the same time. Mm -hmm. But boot camp is free. Um, <clears throat> my question was... Yeah, go ahead, Jack. Uh, you, you mentioned you're showing us these videos, which will be super helpful. In addition to that, right now we're recording this Zoom, and I assume you will be recording all these Zoom lectures. Will we get access to the links to watch these Zooms again? Or Yeah, what I can do is I'll just put those under the video link. Perfect. I'll put them under as like lecture on September 1st or something like that. Awesome. Yeah, but if I have a brain cramp, feel free to remind me to hit the record button. <laughs> Sounds good. Do you want us you to still, email you and tell you um, if we're on campus and can you get to Crosby Hall? <laughs> That's my exact question. <laughs> nice. So when you submit your first homework, just in the body of the email, say, I am on campus or I can reach Crosby Hall. Just so I know if you can pick up your baggie of parts. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. So oh, just, to, just to confirm, we need to watch that video email you about that and get SolidWorks running? So just watch the video, get SolidWorks running. When you turn in your first sketching homework, yeah, just tell me then, hey, I can get to Crosby Hall or I can't. Okay. Okay, other questions, guys? Hey, Tori. Okay. Then class you, dismissed. Your office hours, are they just going to be by appointment only then? I, I'm open to whatever you guys want. Uh, I have to be careful because of the COVID thing and my elderly in-law. So I'm more inclined to do office hours via Zoom. I hate that. Uh, it's not as effective, but it's the reality of life right now. I mean, certainly if you guys send me an email and say, you know, can we set up a Zoom meeting at blah, blah, blah time? Sure, absolutely. We can do that. Or maybe uh, my days are more open Thursdays and Fridays. 
if we want to set up some office hours then for questions. And I'll just leave the computer running on the desktop. Okay, we can do that. You know, I'm open guys. I am not crazy about fixed format. If we got to change something to make it work better, let's do it. I mean, the appointment thing works for me. Just having okay. like an appointment for a Zoom meeting. Yep, uh, that's all good. Okay, then uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Class dismissed. Have a good day and stay safe. You too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.